Philippians chapter 3, through the Bible, part 2. For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the Spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh, Philippians 3 verse 3. We are the circumcision. What does Paul mean by that? He makes it very clear at the end of the epistle to the Galatians. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature, Galatians 6 verse 15. The old circumcision is out. God is not looking for a mere external observance. True circumcision is of the heart. It is the new birth, a new heart attitude toward God. True circumcision is being in Christ. And have no confidence in the flesh. We do not have confidence in our old nature. We trust Christ alone. We do not look to ourselves for salvation, nor can we live the Christian life in our old nature. It must be Christ in us. These legalizers would follow Paul in his missionary journeys. After he was gone, they would meet with the believers and say something like this. Well, we know that Brother Paul says we are to have no confidence in the flesh, that we are not to trust the rituals nor the sacrifices, and that the law won't save us. He does well to say that, because he doesn't have very much to rest upon. He doesn't have the background in Judaism that we do. He says that because of his ignorance and the failure of his life to measure up to the requirements of the law. So, of course, he has no confidence in the flesh. Now Paul is going to answer that. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. If any other man thinks that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Philippians 3 verse 4. Paul says, If there is any person who could have confidence in the flesh, then I could have even more confidence. He is willing to stack his religious life against that of any man. And he knows that he could measure up to him and surpass him, I more. Now he is going to list seven things in which he trusted at one time. This is religion. If anyone could have been saved by religion, Saul of Tarsus would have been the man. Circumcised the eighth day, of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless, Philippians 3 verses 5 and 6. These are still things that people boast about today, but none of them can save you. 1. Circumcise the eighth day. This is a basic rite of the Mosaic system. Well, of course he didn't get up out of the crib on the eighth day and go down to the temple or synagogue to have circumcision performed. It means that his parents took him on his eighth day to be circumcised. He is making it clear that he had godly parents. They reared him according to the Mosaic law. You will remember that the Lord Jesus also had godly parents who brought him to the temple to be circumcised. One of the things that hurt me and held me back in my early ministry was the fact that I had not been brought up in a Christian home. My dad was a heavy drinker who would not darken the door of a church. He was very bitter and very prejudiced. He did make me go to Sunday school, and I thank God for that. But I never saw a Bible or heard a prayer in my home. When I went away to seminary, I did not know even the books of the Bible. I would meet other fellows who had been brought up in Christian homes. They seemed to know so much. I always felt deprived, felt that I had missed something. Well, Paul did not have this handicap. He could say, I was circumcised on the eighth day, which means he had godly parents. 2. Of the stock of Israel. Probably many of the Judaizers were half-breeds. Paul was not. He was of the stock of Israel. I think you could have checked Paul's genealogy in the temple in that day. Paul had a genealogy, a background, and he knew he belonged. 3. Of the tribe of Benjamin. This is like saying that he belonged to the best family. Benjamin had been the favorite son of old Jacob. Rachel had given birth to Benjamin when she died, and she had called him, son of my sorrow, 
but Jacob had named him son of my right hand. Rachel had been the bright spot in his life before Peniel. And when he had looked in the crib at little Benjamin, he had seen him as Rachel's son. Benjamin became his right hand, his walking stick, the one on whom he leaned. Also the first king of Israel came from the tribe of Benjamin. His name was Saul, and I have a notion that Saul of Tarsus was named after him. So Paul could say with pride that he came from the tribe of Benjamin. It is an advantage to be able to say, My father was a minister of the word of God, or, My father was a layman who stood for the word of God. On the other hand, sometimes it can work for a hindrance. I find people who say, Dr. McGee, I was brought up in such and such a church. My grandfather was a founder of the church. There is even a window in the church dedicated to him. So I'll never leave that church. That can be a hindrance if the church has become liberal and the word of God is no longer preached there. But for Paul, being of the tribe of Benjamin was a definite asset. 4. An Hebrew of the Hebrews. This means he was a leader. He was in the highest stratum of the religious circle. He was up at the top. 5. As touching the law, a Pharisee. The Pharisees represented the very best in Israel. They were a religious political party, and their aim was to establish the kingdom. They had arisen sometime after or during the captivity. They were fundamental. They believed in the integrity of the scriptures. They believed in angels. They believed in the resurrection and in miracles. They were also extremely nationalistic in their politics. I think the reason they sent Nicodemus to see Jesus was because they thought, here is a prophet come out of Galilee. If he will just let us hitch our wagon to his star, we'll go places because we know how to manipulate Rome. The Pharisees thought they could bring the kingdom by political manipulation. They wanted to establish the kingdom of God here upon this earth. Paul could say that he was a Pharisee. 6. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church. Paul thought he was doing God's will when he persecuted the church. The other Pharisees were willing to relax when they had run the Christians out of Jerusalem, but Paul was determined to ferret them out all over the world. That was his purpose on his way to Damascus at the time of his conversion. 7. Touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Notice that he does not say he was sinless or perfect, he says he was blameless. In Romans 7 verse 7 Paul tells us his story, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. Paul does not claim sinless perfection. This commandment showed him his sin.